Now back to the Screen Directors Playhouse production of The Dark Mirror, starring Miss Olivia de Havilland in her original twin roles of Ruth and Terry with David Ellis as Scott Elliott. spend the evening with Dr. Elliot? Why, yes. I warned you to stay away from him. He's trying to pump you. Oh, I'm sorry, but I can't help but think he's pretty trustworthy. Ruth, it's getting late. Why don't you go to bed, darling? Wake up, Ruth. I said, wake up. Wake up. What? What? What's the matter? What's the matter? He was sobbing hysterically. It was pretty harrowing for a few minutes. Oh. Oh, you must be mistaken, Terry. Tonight wasn't the first time. It happened last night and the night before that. <gasps> don't you want to know what seems to be frightening you? Oh, I, I don't know whether I do or not. You keep repeating it over and over in your sleep. You're worried about one of us being crazy. Oh, Oh, this is awful. It frightens me. The whole idea of talking and dreaming and sobbing and remembering nothing about it. Well, it can't be very pleasant. But it's really not so important. Just bad dreams. Oh, I... I don't know what to say. I... The night before last, you jumped out of bed screaming someone was putting the lights on and off. (laughs) Darling, the lights were never on. Oh, something's happening to me, and I don't know what it is. I don't understand it. (laughs) I'm worried about you, Ruth. I must watch you more closely before something dreadful happens to you. Oh, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. There. Just remember I'm with you. And I'm always going to be with you. No matter what happens. Well, Terry, this is one of your last tests. At the end of the week, I shall be forced to fire you. In other words, I can look forward to a date with you Saturday night? I'm afraid I can't make it. Who's my rival? You have no rival. Come on. Let's get on with the lie detector experiment. hmm? You can ask me anything you wish. I have nothing to fear. I know that. You ready? Ready. Ruth was telling me about a boy you knew in Ohio with whom she was in love and you didn't care very much for. Oh, Freddie Eklund. Why? What did she say? She just said you told her he wasn't on the level. And proved it. Was she complaining? Oh, good heavens, no. She looks upon you as her big sister. Did she tell you that I knew him first? No, I don't believe she did. Well, that's the truth of the matter. I met him first and introduced him to her. And he didn't care in the slightest for her, and I knew it. And then... He started going around with her, without her even dreaming for one second that it was actually me that he was interested in. Now I know the answer. Lieutenant Stevenson, I invited you to my apartment to tell you positively that Ruth didn't do it. She isn't capable of murder. Well, that does narrow it down a bit. Terry's a paranoiac. Paranoiac has no more conscience, no more sense of right or wrong than than a two-year-old. Paranoiac is capable of doing anything. Of killing her sister, Ruth? Yes. We must do something to protect her. All right. Get hold of Ruth right away and break the news to her, no matter how hard it is. All right, I will. And watch out for yourself, or you'll be the new Dr. Peralta. Well, I don't figure very seriously in her calculations. She didn't mind those tests. They were just another challenge to her. Another opportunity to show the world what contempt she has for it. I still say, be careful, Doc, and tell Ruth right away. Hello? 
Hello, Ruth. Hello, Scott. How are you, dear? Ruth, are you alone? Yes. Why? Well, I don't want Terry to know. But I want you to come to my apartment as soon as possible. It's vitally important. I'll be right over. Scott. What? Ruth. But I just talked to you. What? Never mind. I'm glad you're here. I saw the light in your apartment. I've been walking, and I thought... Why, you're pale, darling. You look as if you've seen a ghost. Something like that. Hallucinations. What causes hallucinations? Hallucinations? Things you imagine you see or hear. Oh, bad nerves. Just nerves. Or a sick mind. Yes, a sick mind. Ruth, there's something I must tell you, but you're too emotionally upset to hear it now. Darling, please, go straight home and relax. I have some urgent business in the next minutes. Everything's going to be all right. I love you very much. I'll be all right. Goodbye, Scott. Lieutenant Stevenson, please. Lieutenant, Terry Collins will be in my apartment in the next few minutes pretending to be Ruth Collins. I don't have time to explain. All I know is that I'm going to play the role of a human booby trap. Stick by your telephone. Ruth, it's not an easy thing to tell you, but I feel that I should. Terry's not well. She's sick inside. And she needs your help. Sick? How? She's paranoid. She's twisted inside. That's absurd. I called you tonight because I want you to talk to her, Terry. I want you as the nearest and dearest to her to persuade her to go to her doctor and put herself in his care. And if I refuse to insult her with such incredible rot? But you mustn't. I can't tell you how important it is that she get this care immediately, Ruth. And if Ruth refuses? If you refuse, Terry. And you are Terry. I'm afraid I'll have to tell who killed Frank Peralta and why. There's nothing you'll be able to do about it. Whatever you guess. I'll remind you anyway. You killed Peralta because the same thing happened to you that has always happened to you before. Remember Freddie Eckland, the boy Ruth loved, who didn't want any part of you? Well, Dr. Peralta was in love with Ruth without even knowing she existed. How interesting. He romanced you and finally asked you to marry him. He didn't know there were twins. All he knew was that every now and then the girl at the newspaper counter brought him a warmth that he missed at other times. And that's what puzzled him. That's why he asked me about a split personality. You weren't aware of this until that night in the apartment when he spoke of this curious difference from time to time. Then you knew what had happened again. It was Ruth he was in love with, not you. So you made sure that if you couldn't have his love, neither should Ruth. Who else have you told this to? Nobody else so far. Terry, I implore you to go to your doctor and be guided. There's no necessity for that. There's nothing you can do about it. You're wasting your time. But haven't you forgotten Ruth? No. No one would take seriously the word of a girl who suffers from hallucinations. Or hasn't she told you? Just a minute. What do you mean by that? Oh, excuse me. I must kill him. Hello? Oh, yes, Lieutenant Stevenson. I've got to kill him. I'll stab right, him with these scissors. I'll be right over. Terry. Ruth's dead. She's killed herself. Does that surprise you?